Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's stand. I was uh, struggling what to read today and went to Sunday school and Sister Carney said, hey, there's a nice verse right here. And I listened to my elders, so. Uh, <laughs> Psalms 27. Uh, we're going to read 1 to verse 3. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. <clears throat> Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear the war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. The devil has been attacking people in this room with fear. Fear, if the devil can get you to fear, the devil can control your life. But there is a God that is stronger than the spirit of fear, and he's with us. He's not with the devil. He's against, and he's with us. Right. Yeah. So let's praise him to, today about a God that will fight for us. Right. In Jesus' name. Dear Lord Jesus God, we pray for this service today, God. We pray against the spirit of fear in this room. In, in your name, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God. My God is an awesome God. He is an awesome God. Yes, God is a faithful God. My God is a faithful God. Yes, my God is a faithful God. Holy. 
He is faithful. He is wonderful. Hallelujah. He is beautiful in your situation. Lord, we call upon that name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to be close, close to your side. So heaven Angels above singing. 
Walking on the earth, he came across a possessed man. Man, the, the spirits came running over to him. And they're just like, "Don't kill us, because we know who you are." The darkness knows Jesus. They know who He is. And that power is within us. He gave us that very same power. Amen. I have some prayer requests. Denise says, "Uncle passed away this morning." She's asked for prayer for her family. You can pray for comfort right now. Comfort and that God would just send his comfort and love to them right now. 
Sister Flocker with an unspoken request. Me and my wife with an unspoken request. Sister Mary, that she would continue to be healed. Amen. She's still on the bed. And right now, you have any needs that you can think of right now, maybe they just came to you. Sister Becky was not able to make it because she's sick. We need to pray for healing for her. Amen. So many prayer requests. But they're nothing for our God. There's not such a thing as too many. There's not such a thing as too many needs for our God. He can touch them all. There's nothing impossible. There's nothing in our God's way. So we need to go to prayer in faith and belief. We pray for it. We believe in it. And then we praise God for it because it happened. Let's go to God in prayer. Jesus, we come before you, God, right now, Jesus. Thank you that, Lord, we can come before you, God, that we can cry out to you, God, and you hear our needs. You know our needs, God. But, Lord, we want to cry them out to you, Lord, so that you can hear them today. Lord, for you, the one that sits on the throne, you are the healer, Lord, the provider, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory today that we can come and give you our needs. As the Lord touch it. Denise's uncle, Lord, touch her family, God. That Lord, they passed away. That Lord, you send your comfort and your love down to them right now. That Lord, they would be covered, Lord, by the loss, Lord, of their loved one. Ask you that Lord, you would touch Sister Flocker, Lord. Please, Lord, touch her knee today. Oh, ask you that Lord, you would touch, Lord. Please request, Lord, touch Sister Mary, Lord. Give her, continue to heal her body, God. We worship you for Touch Sister Becky, that's home, sick. In the name of Jesus, that your healing power will come upon her, God. That she will be healed in the name of Jesus. We worship you, God. We magnify you, Jesus. Oh, we give you all the praise and all the glory today. For, Lord, you are our God, and we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you. Well, you know, there's a there's a story you could say. Uh, I work as a banker. One of it is you get free bread. So I bring home sourdough. We were testing it out. It was a sourdough loaf. And I got the bread knife out. And if you, bread knife is about as big as your forearm. It's really long. It's about a foot long. About that one. About that wide. And I go and cut a piece of bread. And then I, my sister said, oh, I want a piece of bread. So I cut her one. And she said, I want butter on it. I was like, okay. So I used the foot-long knife to butter the bread, obviously, because it's a knife and it can spread just as fine as a butter knife. Well, my mom gets up and I sit down and start eating the bread. And she's like, I want butter on the bread. And I said, Mom, there's a knife over there. And she's like, what knife? And I didn't want to tell her that the, there was a knife that was a foot long, and if it was a snake, it would have bit her. But uh, she had a dirty and a butter knife just to butter her bread. It's just a horrible waste of time. And as somebody that does, can do dishes for over three hours, during another knife is almost sinful. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. At seven at Thursday at Thursday night, seven o'clock is prayer. And seven thirty is Bible study. Amen. Please come. Um and at Sunday at two o'clock is at two thirty is Amen. Please come. Uh, and there's also a youth rally happening in Albany 
which is, oh, Salem. This. So there's a youth rally happening at the 28th in Brother Miranda's church. I obviously am the announcer guy, so I get told last. <laughs> so, a amen. Let's stand. Uh, if you have your op if you have your offering for Christmas for Christ or cookies for Christ, we're still doing that. It is in the maroon box, and then you got the offering plate for your tithes and offering. Man, let's pray for the offering. Dear Lord Jesus, God, bless the people that give. God, bless them a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, Amen. Last March. righteousness. Amen. Praise God. Make God number one. You'll never be sorry. Amen. Praise God. Genesis 21. I don't know if I gave the chapter. Amen. But Genesis 21. 
It reads, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given child suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. I want to preach from the title today with the help of the Lord, The Last Laugh. The Last Laugh. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for the power of your word and the authority of your word. We thank you for the blessing, God, Lord, and the empowerment of your spirit in our life. We thank you, Lord, that we can, Lord, look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, as you lead and guide us in this hour that we're living in, this generation that we're a part of, this world that we're a part of, even amongst the, the world of darkness that, that's trying to invade and, and trying to destroy the kingdom of God, trying to destroy what you established, uh, the church. God, Lord, we believe, God, in the power of your might that you're still able, that you're still mo the most high, God, that you're still well in control, that you know what's going on, you're, you've got your plan all figured out. Uh, and you're positioning your church uh, for a great uh, last moment and last uh, 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 generation harvest. Uh, God, Lord, we thank you for that, uh, that we get to be a part of what you're doing right now. And we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. The last laugh. You may be seated today. As we go and look into this story, with the help of the Lord, I hope to bring, try to illustrate to you to a point of the impossibility of what Abraham or Abraham and Sarah were facing, the promise that God had given them. See, sometimes we read the storybook called the Bible, and we think of it just a, as a storybook, but the Bible is more than a storybook. It is a history of humanity, and God's dealing with them. And so I hope with the help of the Lord, as I said, to try to help us understand the, the impossibility of this. Because we live in a generation today. We live in an hour today that we think impossible for God to do anything. We see all that are being set up, the things that are being set up against the kingdom of God. We see all the things that are being established as, as uh, laws and, and, and mandates uh, uh, as they're trying to shut the mouth of the church. And we begin to think, oh my, it's impossible for God to do anything now. It's impossible for us to have a move of God. It's impossible for us to see the harvest of souls. It's impossible for my loved ones to get right with God. It's impossible for my prodigals, amen, sons and daughters to come home to the kingdom of God. It's just no way that we can have, a, have an establishment upon this earth no more because it's just impossible. Well, as you look into the story of Abraham, I give you an example of impossibility. For you see, as you go through the story, it begins all the way back in Genesis, the 11th chapter, as Terah, the father of Abram, leaves the Ur of the Chaldees. And as he leaves the Ur of the Chaldees, he takes Abram, Sarai, and Lot with him. And then they made it as far as Haran. There at Haran, Terah, the father, dies. And it was during that time I can't imagine, well, I can't imagine the discomfort, the, 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 the upset, how upset Abram probably was. Here he was going with his dad somewhere, and in the midst of the journey, his dad dies. I know of the emptiness. I know of the, the, just the, 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 the frustration and the hurt and the pain that goes with that. When you had all these plans, and now Terah dies. In the midst of his discomfort, in the midst of his pain and agony, in the midst of his suffering, God calls Abram. In Genesis, the 12th chapter, Abram is now 75 years old. 
Now, just to set the stage, they lived at that time. In fact, God said that they would be able to live to 120. So basically, Abram is looking at about 45 years of life left. And it's there that God begins to deal with him. And the Bible says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country. country. You are in Genesis 12. And from thy kindred and from thy father's house into the land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Oh, what a promise. Amen. Oh, what a, bl- a promise of blessing. Amen. From my descendants, the world is going to be blessed. From those that come from me, amen, God's going to use them to bless all the world. The problem was, he had no sons. 75 years of age, if you haven't had your children yet, you may not. He had no son. He had no son. The thing about it was, his wife was only about 10 years younger. She was 65. Now, I understand that's about mid-age for that lifespan during that time. And usually you have your children, you know, around that age or younger. But here God gives him a blessing. God gives him a promise. I believe that God has given some promises to people within the sound of my voice. I believe God has spoken into your life about the things that he wants to do in your life. How he wants to bless you. How he wants to help you. How he wants to direct you. How he wants, uh, amen, to anoint you. I believe that God has placed some blessings, uh, some promises uh, upon those that are here today. Uh, amen. And you're still w- looking. You're still waiting. You're still thinking, oh my, amen, if it's not going to happen now, it may never happen. And you begin to wonder. And here we see Abraham or Abram and Sarai in the same position. A famine come, comes and causes them to go to Egypt. They're in Egypt that, uh, 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 that, that they're, they're tested. They leave Egypt finally after their test. And Abraham and Lot have to separate because their blessings of, uh, of, the, uh, of the earthly gain is so great that they can't uh, uh, share the same pasture anymore. And so they separate. And, and Abraham or Abram lets Lot choose what he wants and Lot chooses the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah and Abram is left with the hills. But in the midst of that, God reminds him again of the blessing of the many nations. We find in Genesis 13, 16, again, God reminds him, I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. I am so thankful for the reminding, the reminders that God brings in our life. And I believe God has, amen, from time to time. I know as a church here, God has brought different ones into minister in this church, reminding us of what God wants to do in the last days, reminding what God has planned for in these last days, amen. And I'm just coming with another voice today to try to stir our faith, to try to stir our trust, to try to help us, amen, to hold on to what God is going to do. It ain't time to throw in the towel. It ain't time to give up. It ain't time to say, well, devil, you win. It's time to hold to the promises of God. It's time to cling to the promises of God. It's time to say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's time to say, nothing shall separate me from the love of Christ. Uh, Amen. It's time to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Because God is with me. Who can be against me? Amen. Because God has said it. Amen. Makes it possible. Because God has declared it. Makes it possible. It is a time for the church of the living God. Amen. Amen. To bury our head in the sand and say, oh, well, we'll just wait till Jesus comes. It's time to get our prayer uh, cloth out. Amen. And put it over our shoulders. It's time. Amen. To cry out to the almighty God. It's time to put our faith and trust in the God. Amen. The promises. Amen. The God that has spoken. The God that said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
Don't you dare, amen, say that. Well, that happened on the day of Pentecost. Therefore, God's fulfilled it. I'm telling you that that was just the beginning when God was going to do it. God's going to do it again, amen, in this world that we live in. Amen, because God said it. It's going to happen, and there's nothing the devil can do about it. God reminds him of his blessing. Lot, being with Sodom and Gomorrah, is taken by the enemy, and Abraham rescues Lot and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. And on, on his way back from the rescue mission, he f- comes in contact with the king of Salem, Melchizedek. And Melchizedek is blessed by, Ab- uh, by Mel- uh, Mel- Abram is blessed by Melchizedek. Then Abram, Abram comes up with a plan in Genesis 15, 1. Because he's waited now how many years? Several years and God still hasn't given him the promised son. Why are you going through this story? Because I, I think sometimes we forget what really took place. Right here, Abraham, or Abram, his name will be called Abraham here, here in a few, few moments. He's the one that came up with the plan first. And we blame Sarah. But look at this. Genesis 15, and as these things, the word came unto Abram in a great, in a vision, saying, fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. What's he saying? Hey, quit worrying, Abram, I've got it under control. I know what I'm doing. Just keep trusting me. Just keep trusting me, Abram. I'm thy shield, and I'm thy exceeding great reward. Verse 2, Abram said, Lord God. What will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And he turns and says, there's a steward in my house. His name is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born, starting to reason with God. Well, you know, if somebody's born in my house, technically, they're my seed. So, Lord, here's Eliezer, and and if you'll just... uh, uh, let me have one of his kids, amen, he can be my heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven, all right? And so he said, this is to, just to help you out. Sometimes we do that. When God said something, amen, when God's given you a promise, when God's spoken to your life, amen, and it doesn't happen tomorrow, and it doesn't happen this year, and it doesn't happen this decade, We begin to reason, well, I know God can't lie. So let's figure out a way to change what he said and make it fit so we can prove that God don't. Because we know we don't want to say God's lying. So we come up with this plan. This is crazy. It's not even close to what God said, what Abraham's doing here. It's not even close. It's not showing the might of God. It's not showing the power of God. It's not showing the grace of God. It's not showing the mercy of God. It's not. And I, I, I'm here to tell you, God's going to get praise. God's going to get glory. And when revival breaks out, we're going to say, wow, look what God has done. When, when true revival happens in your family, amen, and they come to you asking what they need to get right with God of over, amen, when they come to you and say, all right, amen, I'm coming to church with you today, amen, you will know God's doing something. Don't you dare get uh, faithless. Uh, don't you dare quit trusting God. Keep walking. Keep believing God is working, and God's going to do miraculous things in your family if you just keep trusting him. Trying to help him out. And you know God, in his wonderful mercy, says, all right, come here. Now look toward the heaven in Genesis 15, 5. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And something happened right there. Something happened right there. As he looked at the stars. I don't know something about stars, maybe. Praise God, amen. But as he looked to the stars, something happened. And the Bible says he believed in the Lord. He 
must up to that point been just going through the motions. Just going through the, you know, I just gonna get through today. And then when tomorrow comes, I'll get through tomorrow. And just just getting through the motions of it. Like we do. But I've come to point to the stars today. I've come to remind you that what God has said is not a farce. It's not a, 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 a impossibility. But what God has said, he will do, he will do. What he promised he would do, he will do. When he declares in his word, amen, that he will be our shield and buckler. Amen, church. It ain't time to fear the enemy. It ain't time to fear the government. It ain't time to fear our neighbors. It ain't time to fear false doctrine. It's time to believe. It's time to believe. It's time to believe. Amen. It's time to believe. I believe in the Lord. I believe in his promises. I believe in his power. I believe in his ability. I believe. When he saw the stars, he believed in the Lord. And it was counted, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And as he began to believe in the Lord, what, look what God did. God established a covenant with Abram. And it came to pass the same chapter, Genesis 15, verse 17. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, Abram had taken certain animals, divided some of them, laid them and put a path between the, the, the sacrificed animals. And he had to stay out there. God had told him to do it and that he would visit him and he would come to him. And finally, when it was dark, when the sun went down all day long, he'd been waiting on God. But when it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp passed between the pieces signifying a sealing, the seal of a covenant that God was with him. Amen. No longer would Abram have to doubt that God was showing him, amen, I am with you. Amen. And as it's already been declared to you today, God is with us. There's no way you would be here today without the help of God. God is with us. God has kept us. Even at times when we didn't want to be kept. God kept us. God is with us in this generation. God is with us in this hour. I know it's 2022. God is still God. God is still working. God is still directing. God is still planning. God is still going to do a work. God is with us. Well, Abram's plan didn't mount to a hill of beans to God, but Sarah got thinking that she could help God out. And so she tries to help God out with Hagar, her mate, her handmaiden. Abraham is 86 years of age at this time, still waiting on the promised son. And so Abram goes ahead and, and, and submits himself to the plan of Sarai. And, 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 and she has a, a son, he has a son with Hagar, Ishmael. And then some uh, 13 years later, after that, age 99 now, how old was he when he got the promise? 75. How old is he now? 99. That's 24 years of waiting on God. 24 years. I, you know, the Bible says he never staggered at the promises of God, and thank God it says it that way, because then I can at times, though I think I'm staggering, I can remind myself I'm not staggering, because Abraham didn't stagger, amen, when he wasn't, I mean, some of the things he did, I would call staggering. 
helping God out with, you know, uh, let's have a son with, uh, you know, my, my, my servant and, and, and uh, all this, you know, and not believing, you know, coming up with a plan and, and then going in with Hagar and, and, and having a son. I call that staggering in my book. But God doesn't call it in his book. So that should be hope for somebody. Maybe you haven't been everything you need to be for God. Amen. I've got news for you. Then God's not done with you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is still going to work through you. Amen. And so we find finally at the age of 99, the Lord visits Abraham, renewing the covenant. God changes Abram's name to Abraham. Genesis 17 and 5, neither shall thy name be anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For your father of many nations have I made thee. So we see that God sets forth a covenant and a promise, and he changes the name of Abram to Abraham in, in light of what God's about to do. And something happens here in Genesis 17. That I want to read to you. And God said unto Abraham, verse 15. Now he's already had the son, Ishmael. And Abraham's already tried to convince God that that should be the promised son. And God's answer is this. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. And said in his heart, he didn't say it out loud, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear And again, he tries to convince God, oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said again, verse 19, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. God, again, refocuses the, the, the blessing and the promise and the covenant with Isaac. He says, no, it's not going to be the way you think it is. It's going to be the way I said it was. And it's going to be with Sarah. Yes, I know you're 100. It's impossible. I know she's 90. It's no way going to happen. But God says it's going to happen. We enter into a, a, a generation today, as I've already declared at the beginning of this message, that it looks impossible for revival. It looks impossible for the church to grow. It looks impossible for us to gain buildings and, and gain influence. And it looks impossible that nobody really wants God. Nobody really wants to serve God. Nobody really wants the apostolic faith. Nobody wants the Pentecostal experience. Nobody really wants to accept the fact that they got to be born again. And nobody wants the apostolic lifestyle. And, and there's just nobody that wants this. And we're just... just uh, wasting our time. We're just uh, 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 just spinning our wheels. There's no way I've come to this pulpit today to declare to you, I still believe in God. I still believe in the power of God. I still believe in the promises of God. I still believe that God has positioned us for such a time as this. And God has not forsaken us and, and washed us aside. But God is about to do a work, amen, in our life. 99 years old you are, Abraham, but you're still going to see my work. You're going to still receive my blessing. You're going to still receive my promise. I know it's been 24 years since I called you out, amen, of Haran, amen, to come into the land of Canaan. But I'm telling you what, Abraham, amen, my thoughts and my decision and my plan has not changed. Amen. Praise God. Maybe a lot of things have changed. But my plan has not changed. Amen. And I believe with all my heart today that God's telling this generation 
mission and this apostolic church, my plan has not changed. I don't care who sits in the White House. I don't care who sits in the governor's house. My plan has not changed. I'm going to have revival. I'm going to move mightily. You're going to see my work. You're going to see my hand. You're going to see my blessing. You're going to see miracle signs and wonders done by my name and by my people because I am going to have the last laugh. I am going to have the last laugh. For you see, Abraham laughs. Sarah, Genesis 18, God visits him again. The, the Lord visits Abraham again. And we find in Genesis 18, verse 9, and, when, and they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And she heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah, the Bible declares it again here, were old. The Bible says you're old, you're old. Not just were they old, but the Bible says well stricken in age. It ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Sarah was beyond being able to have children. This is what that is saying in the King James Version. What does Sarah do when she hears this? Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh? Saying, shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? God is so awesome. He didn't let her get away with it, did he? Is anything too hard for the Lord? That is a key ingredient to our faith in God. We have got to come to the place that we believe that phrase right there. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I want that to sink in because I know some of your prayers. And I know some of your dreams. I know my prayers. I know my dreams. And when I begin to think of what I want to see God do and what I believe God can do, I hear a laugh in the background. No way. Just as Abraham laughed when God told him, just as Sarah laughed, there's no way. It's impossible. I'm well stricken in age. I'm after the, 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 the manner of women. There's just no way that it can happen. I hear the rumble of laughter going on in America right now about the church and what it can do in this generation. There's just no way. You don't have the political clout. You don't have everything, the backing. You don't have the financial backing. There's just no way that God can do anything. America's going down a slick cliff, and there's no way stopping it. It's going to hit bottom and explode, and there's nothing going to be left in America. I hear it. I hear the laughter. I hear the enemy mocking me as I continue to believe in revival. As I continue to preach, there is no doubt that my voice being what it is today and my body being what it is today, I know why it is. One of the reasons is because the devil's laughing at me to come to this pulpit and declare what I'm declaring today. But I've come anyway to declare to you God's not done yet new life. God's not finished with your family yet. God's not walked off the scene. God is still able to save to the uttermost. God is still able to woo and to woe. Amen and draw. Amen and and anoint and to direct lives. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, God said, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. 
And we go to our, re- our, 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 our text today. And we read and make reference to it again here today. Genesis 21, 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, which Sarah bare to him, Isaac. What does Isaac mean? What is the definition of the name Isaac? The definition of the name of Isaac is laughter. Why? Because God will always get the last. Everywhere that Isaac went, it was God laughing. Amen. It was God saying, see what I can do. See what I have done. See what I will do. Amen. And what I am able, amen, to do. Amen. God's laughter rung out. Amen. As that child began to grow and and began to be used of God. Amen. He was laughing in the face of the enemy. The enemy had spent 24 years laughing. To the point that he called Abraham and Sarah to laugh at the blessing and the promise of God. But who got the last laugh? God did. God's going to get the last laugh in this generation. I know they're saying there's no way. I know they're saying it's impossible. I know all what they're they're saying. Amen. But I'm here to declare to you, God's going to get the last laugh. I'm reminded of a time. When the promised one, the Messiah, was standing before Pilate and the crowd, as they began to jeer him, as they began to mock him, as they began to cry out to to, to, to Pilate to crucify him, the soldiers got involved. In fact, in Matthew 27, verse 27, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall. And gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they placed, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, laughed at him, jeered at him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him. And they took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him. And put his own garment back on uh, on him and went away to crucify him. Now we see the same Lord, the same promised Messiah, the promised one, Emmanuel, God with us. Now pierced hands with the nails and pierced feet with nails, nailed to an old rugged cross. We see in Matthew 27, 39, and they, speaking of the crowd, passed by, reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, If thou hast destroyed the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the true Son of God, come down from the cross, mocking, jeering, laughing. Verse 41, likewise unto the chief priest, mocking him. And the scribes and the others said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of of Israel, let him come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Laughter after laughter after laughter rang out about the crucified Christ. About the one that was promised. About the one that called himself the Messiah. The one that said that he was indeed the Son of God. The one that said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father Philip. The one that said that I am, that I am. Amen. The one that said that I, that I am the one that was promised. I am the one that was sent by God. Now he lays upon the cross. About to meet death. Face to face. Laughter. Jeering, there's no way. He said uh, uh, that he would ri- rise again in three days, and there's no way. Laughter after laughter. 
finally says, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost, and he died. Obviously, the enemy won. Obviously, the devil and his kingdom accomplished what they had set out to do, was to crucify and destroy the Christ. Destroy the promise. Destroy the hope. It was so devastating that only one disciple, to my knowledge, even stayed close, and that was John. The rest ran, feeling hopeless, feeling like all that they had hoped in and the promises that had been given to them were just a lie. He's buried in a borrowed tomb. But something happens that I want to remind you of during that time. For Paul writes in the book of Ephesians, and he gives some insight to some, a, a bit of information that, that, uh, that, that, that maybe you missed. He says in Ephesians 4, 8 through 10. Wherefore he saith, when he, speaking of Christ, ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Verse 9, now that he, speaking of Christ, ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up Above, up far above all heaven, that he might fill all things. What was happening during his burial, during his time in the tomb? Uh, there's something that took place uh, that the Spirit of Christ uh, began to go into the descend into the depths of the earth. Uh, I believe uh, it's my belief that he descended to the very gates of hell, and there was much celebration going on, obviously. Because they knew that they had destroyed the promised one. They had destroyed the Emmanuel. They had destroyed the Messiah. They had destroyed the hope of the earth. The one, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. They had destroyed it. They destroyed the plan of God. They destroyed all that God planned to do. They were victorious. But he descended into the depths. And as they were laughing... As they were jeering and as they were mocking, I can almost hear the, the still small voice of one that says, I have come for what belongs to me. I have come to take back that which belongs to me. I have paid the price for all humanity. I have paid the price, amen, for all that has that have sinned. I have paid that price of death. And now I've come to take back what belongs to me. And I can almost begin to hear the, the laughter, amen, begin to die out. And the celebration begin to cool down, amen, as the Lord walks into the scene and says, all right, enemy, all right, Satan, you now have to hand over the keys of hell and of death. No longer do you own the keys of hell. No longer do you own the keys of death, but I have paid the price. I have paid the sacrifice. I can almost begin to hear the laughter of our Lord begin to ring out as he takes the dangling keys of death, of hell and death, and begins to walk back out of that corridor saying, I have done it. I have destroyed the works of the enemy, and any man that will come unto me can have life and have it more abundantly. Anyone that will come unto me, amen, can have their life changed. They can have their life resurrected. They can have their life renewed. Anyone that will come unto me because I have paid the price. Oh, the Lord again gets the last laugh. The Lord again in this situation gets the last laugh. For, for the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall it be brought to pass the saying that his death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks 
be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to live in sin today. You don't have to be, amen, chained and bound and addicted to sin today because the Lord paid the price. Everyone that lives the overcoming life is a piece of laughter in the face of Satan. That's why he hates us so much. Because we're constantly reminded of him, of what Christ did for us at Calvary. Just as everywhere that little boy ran, Isaac, there was laughter in the hearts of Abraham and Sarah because look what the Lord said he would do and look what he did. Amen. No matter where they went, amen, there was that image, there was that symbol of the laughter of God reminding them of God can do. Amen. And today, when we walk in, in newness of life, when we walk, amen, in righteousness and holiness that God has given us, we are a symbol to the world that God is still God, that God is still able, and that God is still willing. We are God's laughter to this generation. We are God's laughter to the prince and the power of the air. We are the God's laughter to this darkness that's around us. We are God's laughter. Because God has done the impossible. So as you stand with me today, God has made you promises. In your prayer time. God has spoken to you about some things that he wants to do. And they seem so far out there. As every day, week, month, year goes by, it seems more and more like it's not going to happen. In fact, some of us come, have come to that place that we thought, well, maybe I didn't hear from God. Just maybe this is a promise that really wasn't of God. It was more of me. I have a feeling that's what Abraham was doing when he said, what about it? My servant. I think that's what Sarah was doing when she said, take Hagar. Let's have Ishmael. Because maybe we just didn't hear from God. Maybe this end time revival is just a, a farce. And I hate to say it, but there are some even of the apostolic faith that feel that way. That there's no end time revival. That we're just going to escape out of here by the skin of our teeth. God bless them. Why? Why do they feel that? going to touch your family, God's going to touch your family. If God said that he's going to open a door in your ministry, he's going to open a door in your ministry. If God has said and declared to you in those hours of prayer, when you were weeping before God and crying out to him, almost out of control, he began to sweep over you in that still small voice of his and begin to tell you, do not fear, do not be afraid. I will do a work in your life. I will do a work in your family. I will do a work. I will work. I will reach. I will touch. I know. But I'm 86, Abraham said. Now I'm 99. Still hasn't happened. My dad would tell me, son, that just means you're one day closer to it happening. 
Somebody needs to go and grab a hold of it today and say, you know what? I can't see it. I can't even feel it. But I'm going to hold to your promises, God. I'm going to hold to that promise that you gave to me. I'm going to cling to it, God. Because you're still God. Is there anything impossible? Is there anything, excuse me, too hard? That's what he said. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? The answer to that question is no. The answer to that question is no. Just as he got the last laugh in the days of Abraham and Sarah, just as he got the last laugh during the crucifixion, I believe he's going to get the last laugh in this generation. Those that seem impossible for God to reach, God's going to reach. You just got to hold on. You just got to look up at the stars and believe. Believe. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, but my word shall not pass away. My word shall not, that's been sent out, will not return unto me void, but will do that which I have sent it to do. It's time to begin to laugh. New life, it's time for us to laugh. It's time for us in faith begin to have that old belly roll of laughter saying, ha, 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 God's not done. You haven't seen anything yet. History, all of history hasn't even come close to what God's about to do. Oh, the apostles in their day, they're going to come running to us and say, how did it happen? Oh, what was it like? Amen. To see so many thousands of people, yea, even millions of people turn to God. I know. I just hit a speed bump. But I'm telling you, I believe. I believe that God's going to get the last laugh. And it's up to people like you and me to keep believing. It's up, it's up to people like you and me to keep holding. It's up to people like you and me to say, hey, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. God's going to reach my child. God's going to reach my neighbor. God's going to reach my best friend. Because God gets the last laugh. Because God gets the last laugh in this generation. The Bible says that when finally the time comes for the devil, Satan, to receive his reward, that all that see him my terminology because I'm preaching about the last laugh. And everybody that sees him are going to laugh. They said, this is the one that tried to destroy the, the kingdoms of the world. This is the one? you got to be kidding me. This little guy? There's no way. And then God's going to cast him to the lake of fire where he's going to not burn up, but he's going to spend eternity in anguish and pain. And God's laughter will ring out again. And we'll go all gather around that throne and say, you are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, let the Lord laugh today, would you? Or would somebody begin to let the Lord laugh in your situation? Will you begin to let the Lord's laughter, amen, grip your soul right now? Amen. Will you begin, amen, to look at your circumstance and say, ha, 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 but it's not big, bigger than my God. It's not bigger than my God. It's not bigger than my God. It's not bigger than my God. It's time to let the Lord's laughter ring. 
It's time to let the Lord's praise ring out. It's time to let the Lord's praise.